Williams. This is the 50th anniversary of the first time that man, Jacques Plante, ever put a mask on in an NHL game, and it revolutionized the way the game was played. Jerry Cheever said that's how his face would have looked if he didn't wear a mask. He was the first man to decorate his mask back in the 68-69 season. We remember Doug Favell from the Flyers. He painted it Philly orange, of course, on Halloween and back in 1972. And the legendary mask worn by this man, Mike Richter. Lady Liberty, shining bright. And Mike Richter joins us now. Good to see you as always. Thanks for having me. When you think back to this day, 50 years ago, yeah. this happened for the first time. You as a goaltender probably understand the magnitude of that decision, right? You know, it's an incredible thing. It's easy to say nowadays with the composite sticks and the strength and condition of the players, they shoot the puck so much harder than they did back then. But I mean, take a hockey puck and drop it on your toe. It hurts. And these guys are getting in the face. So, I mean, the idea of not just being needing to concentrate to play the game, but the courage involved without a mask is incredible. And the fact that you went through what you did go through, mm -hmm. the concussion that ultimately ended your career sure. on the shot by Chris Tamer, yeah. yet you probably would think from time to time what could have and would have happened if you didn't have that mask on. Yeah, I mean, there'd be there'd be people dying, obviously. I mean, that was a hard shot, but I, my mask took uh, the brunt of it. It really ended up having, it was, if you notice, it was floating a little bit in an odd way, so it was difficult for me. To, I jumped when I shouldn't have. But it actually distended through my ear hole. And I mean, that, that's the difference between maybe life and death because most of the mass took it. Well. Just frightening when you Amazing. consider it. And then yeah. when you consider that the guys were shooting almost as hard as they are now, they didn't have helmets on back yeah. in the day. The first thing was just a piece of plastic over there. For yeah, us. and if you notice how they even involve themselves, it's a lot of leg slides and everything else. But I mean, there's no way you're going to get through one of those games without being hit. And uh, Jacques Plant, I thought that line was so incredible. We thought he was chicken, but he turned out to be an innovator. I mean, he's an amazing, amazing guy. And we saw a little bit earlier, Glenn Healy had a moment with yeah. his mask and helmet back in the 94 <laughs> yeah. season. The shutting out the Boston Bruins with a makeshift mask that included tape on his helmet. What do you remember from that day? Well, they were really being hard asses about the, uh, the ruling, and they said, look, he has to wear a blue helmet. He cannot wear a white helmet. Of course, we had a white helmet and a blue. And Glenn, he was just a great player. I mean, when he was on, forget it. He's not going to let a puck in. And you can't really tell from a distance. The, the trainers did such a good job with this, but Heels has blue tape on his helmet, and it looks like a pair of denim jeans if you got up close. And my God, that kid took unlimited heat for it, but of course he goes out there and shuts up the Bruins, so he got the last laugh. When you were a kid, did you have a favorite goalie or a favorite goalie mask that you always wanted to? Paint? Yeah, I mean, we loved all the masks. to showed Doug Favell there. I was from Philadelphia, and later on they did like a, a sunrise over it, so I had these white and orange streaks. But Bernie Perrance, I have to say, looking back, it's a little bit boring. He just had three flyer stickers, but he looks so cool, and he's such a good player, you couldn't help but love the mask. Great to see you as always. Thanks for having me. Mike Richter sharing his recollections on the the 50th anniversary of the first time a goaltender ever put on a mask, and thank goodness he did. We're between periods two and three. Thank you, Jean.